There are new properties in the Screen Capture API that improve screen sharing experiences. You can now precisely identify whether a resource on your page is render blocking or not. There is a new way to send data to a backend server with the declarative pending beacon API in Origin Trial. And there's plenty more. I'm Adriana Jara. Let's dive in and see what's new for developers in Chrome 107. In this version, the Screen Capture API adds new properties to improve the screen sharing experiences. The Display Media Stream constraints added the self browser surface. With this hint, the application can tell the browser that when calling Get Display Media, the current tab should be excluded. It prevents accidental self capture and avoids the Hall of Mirrors effects we've seen in video conferences. Display Media Stream Constraints now also has the surface switching property. This property adds an option to programmatically control whether Chrome chose a button for switching tabs while screen sharing. These options will be passed to get display media. The Share This Tab Instead button allows users to switch to a new tab without going back to the video conference tab or selecting from a long list of tabs but the behavior is exposed conditionally in case the web application doesn't handle it. Also, media track constraint set adds the property display surface. When get display media is called, the browser offers the user a choice of display surfaces. It can be tabs, windows, or monitors. Using the display surface constraint, the web app may now hint to the browser if it prefers one of the surfaces types to be offered more prominently. For example, it can prevent oversharing by accident since sharing a single tab can be the default. Check out the article in the description for details. Reliable insights into a page's performance are critical for developers to build faster user experiences. So far, developers have relied on complex heuristics to determine whether a resource is render blocking or not. Now, the Performance API includes the render blocking status property, which provides a direct signal from the browser that identifies the resources that prevent your page from displaying until they are downloaded. The code snippet here shows how to get a list of all your resources and use the new render blocking status property to list all of those that are render blocking. Optimizing how you load your resources helps with Core Web Vitals and with providing a better user experience. Check out the MDN documentation to learn more about the Performance API, look for those render blocking resources, and optimize away. The declarative pending beacon API lets the browser control when beacons are sent. A beacon is a bundle of data sent to a backend server without expecting a particular response. Applications often want to send these beacons at the end of a user's visit, but there's no good time for that send call to be made. This API delegates the sending to the browser itself. So it can support beacons on page on load or on page height without the developer having to implement send calls at exactly the right times. Sign up for the origin trial. Give the API a try, and please send feedback our way to improve the use cases. Of course, there's plenty more. The expect-ct HTTP header is deprecated. The rel attribute is now supported on form elements. Oh, and last time I mentioned grid template interpolation. This time, it should be included. All the details, including links, docs, and specs, are in the post linked in the description. Hit the subscribe button now so that you don't miss the latest Chrome DevTools video, GUI challenges, HTTP 203, and more. Yo soy Adriana Jara, and as soon as Chrome 108 is released, 
I'll be right here to tell you what's new in Chrome.